FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. Ladies and gentlemen, Genevieve Wood. Genevieve Wood is the only guest that we have on a regular basis that we do not have an intro. Oh, gosh. Put me on the spot. You know, (laughs) the more intro you play, the less time I get to talk. That's the intro? Uh, the less, the less. That's we, her new intro. The less we play, the more she gets to talk. Yeah, we're gonna have to come up with something else. Yeah, Genevieve like Wood, no. Okay. But Genevieve Wood, I got something else coming your way. But thanks for the effort, you guys. Hi. I don't think that was a bad first try, though. That was pretty good. Well, for for a first intro, as in you not having an intro, yes. But we'll have to put together. It a was legit a Texarkana song, though, so it did have Texas and it did have <laughs> "Cut to the Chase." So yeah, we tried. There was some thought. We, well, we'll get it there. Sorry, you guys, Gen- you guys, it was a nice run. It was a really, <laughs> it was a really good attempt. All right, so Genevieve Wood. First of all, uh, this uh, trade speech yesterday. Uh, I was just breaking it down. And what first, let me get your take on this. Well, well, let me be honest with you. I did not get to hear his entire speech. I got overtaken by some other events. Yes, of course. Yeah. In DC. But, but I, I will tell you, it's one of the best ways to kind of get a feel for how something went over was to just kind of see how different parts of the world are talking about it. And, you know, I saw a lot of response, A, from people who quote the, the Never Trump crowd, saying that there was a lot of content here, that this, you know, that they were actually were impressed by the fact it was it was a well done speech, a lot of good content in it, and the fact a lot of people on the left and the Twitter sphere and other places were going bonkers. And usually, when people are going bonkers, it means that somebody was doing something well that they don't like because it's scaring them a little bit. And I, so I think what you were just saying is actually right. I think it's a it's a huge issue. I mean, the issue of a, of the economy and jobs, trade certainly plays into that. Uh, that is something that's really hit a nervous election cycle, and he's talking about it far more. Than, than Hillary is. What's interesting is, and I was making the comparison uh, because people, I was saying how odd it is that Reagan conservatives are so angry at Donald Trump when he talks about these trade pacts and when he talks about trade restrictions or making it more advantageous for America. When you consider that that speech yesterday, as I pointed out a couple times already this morning, I'll just put it for your benefit, it makes him look like a baby kitten compared to Ronald Reagan and Reagan's trade policies. I mean, he was he was putting quotas on on imported sugar. He was putting quotas on clothespins, cedar shingles, lumber on Japanese motorcycles. I mean, you name it. Reagan was was far more of a protectionist than than Donald Trump is leaning towards. Well, and look, here's the reality. We need to have a discussion. I mean, the truth is I'm a big free trader. I think trade is good. But that doesn't mean that every trade deal we have ever signed has been the best deal for the United States. I mean, that's just a, that's a reality. We have, you know, sometimes not done our due diligence in terms of protecting American workers. And when I say protection, that doesn't mean you're a protectionist. It just means that you should be looking out for your people. You should be looking at, is this the best deal that America can get? And I just have to say that I don't, you know, I think the fact that he's brought that up, it's a good debate for us to have. It's certainly the kind of thing, you know, the other side, I don't know how much he hit on this yesterday, but when you talk about TPP, you have to look at some of these trade deals and say, look, there's a lot here that has absolutely nothing to do with trade. I mean, this is the way that the Obama administration is trying to work in uh, their climate change agenda. They work that kind of stuff into trade deals. So people, and I think most people don't know that. That kind of stuff needs to be exposed. That's one reason Hillary was so for it before she's now forced against it <laughs> right. is because it has all this other stuff in it that had, like I said, nothing to do with trade. Yeah, and, and the and the, the his explanation, and once you get a chance, some downtime, because I know it's going to be a hugely busy time this week, but, but his breakdown and his evisceration of TPP was – Excellent, and it, and it was it put it into language that I think every American can understand, and I thought I thought it was great. And so again, and even when he does talk about the trade, uh, making it better for Americans regarding trade, he's not really talking about the things that are going to be affecting Americans necessarily at Target. Or at the car dealership. He's not talking about textile limitations. He's not talking about auto export import limitations, those kinds of things. He's talking about more of the bigger picture industrial trade deals that are going on right now. Right. And and I think it, this is also something that I, that I think he needs to, to nail home and, and just bring to the forefront is the whole issue of, you know, the, the, the corporate tax rate that we have here. I mean that's not 
trade per se, but that is one of the reasons. If some, one of the reasons that, that companies leave this country. Yes, some of them want to go somewhere else and get cheaper labor. But the other reason is that our tax rate here is one of the highest, if not the highest, in the in the Western world. So yeah, it's cheaper to go set up your shop somewhere else when you're paying a lot less in taxes. If we were to bring that down, a lot of other businesses would stay here, too. So it's, it's trade is an issue, but the corporate tax rate is an issue. There's a number of things that deal with jobs that I think he can be strongly for and expose. And, frankly, I think Hillary's going to have a hard time supporting because that's just not the Democratic liberal line. Right. And, and in fact, they're talking about increasing uh, the, the re- regulations on corporations that are, that are keeping them from wanting to stay in the United States. And so that, that corporate taxation, corporate regulation deal is an important component of any kind of trade, global economic situation that we're looking into. And I'm glad you point out the missed uh, miscalculation on how companies and why companies move overseas. Not all of them are just a bunch of greedy corporate pigs. These are people who are uh, suffering here because of the corporate tax rate, and you can hardly blame them for wanting to go over to be able to keep their costs lower for their consumers and keep themselves in business. Right, they've got to keep their bottom line, you know, in the in the black too. I mean, they're competing with other companies in other countries that maybe make similar products or do similar services. So they've got to compete globally, if you will. So the U.S. has to compete globally. Uh, and so this is, you know, one of those things again where I just think you know, it's such a, a stark contrast between the kind of ideas and policies that a, that a Trump administration would offer versus what a Democratic administration would offer. And I think the more speeches he gives like this one, whether it's about trade or whatever the issue happens to be, and really breaks it down, as you said, I think it's going to, it's going to change some of the poll numbers we've seen, we've seen of late. But I also think you're right that some of these polls are a little bit, well, we know one of them was exaggerated because I think it was the ABC poll that completely oversampled uh, the number of Democrats in the poll. So not surprising, it's like 14 point spread. But nonetheless, you know, one of Donald Trump's, I think, weaknesses, if you will, is that people just are like, is, you know, does he really have the policy gravitas? Does he really have the right advisors? Is he really, does he really want this job? Is he going to get serious about it? Every speech he gives that shows he is serious about it, that he does have a grasp of these issues, I think really, really helps him because it plugs in the hole that, that a lot of folks are still nervous about. And one element of the speech, and I poured over every inch of it, I found fascinating is that it Donald Trump completely avoided attacking fellow Republicans, even though there were many attackable fellow Republicans <laughs> on the trade deal. He avoided it altogether, kept it focused on Hillary, which I think is actually a That's smart, a definitely smart and definitely a new frontier in the Trump speech giving that's for sure <laughs> Genevieve Wood always great to talk to you thank you so much for being with us dailysignal.com heritage.org at Genevieve Wood appreciate you as always good to be with you